Hello everyone, my name is Hipatula Mushtaq and I'm from grade 11 and today I'm going to present my talk on the topic DNA data storage, the future of data archiving. We're posed with a data storage crisis as the amount of data being produced far exceeds our ability to store it. Let's take the example of Google search alone, which processes over 200,000 terabytes of data every single day. That's about 200,000 single terabyte drives and 200 million single gigabyte drives. Now imagine storing all the information of the world, every book, every movie, every document, all of it. That would be about 10 trillion gigabytes of data and would require about 10 billion single terabyte drives. Each being about 5 inches long, end to end, they would reach 79,000 miles, that's about 3 times around the Earth's equator. Now, using DNA as a data storage medium, we could store all of the information in a space as small as a coffee cup. So what is it about DNA that's making scientists to look into it as a data storage medium and what has to be done to convert all the zeros and ones into tiny DNA strands? Moving on to the contents for today's presentation, we have introduction, DNA and its structure, importance of DNA data storage, failures of existing storage media, coding, decoding, challenges faced in data, DNA data storage, and lastly, the conclusion. Now, DNA data storage is an emerging technology that harnesses the ability of DNA molecules to store digital data. Now, DNA is more dense, stable, long-lasting, retains information for long, and secure long-term energy efficient as compared to traditional storage media like floppy disks, compact disks, hard drives, USBs, etc. Now, we have been talking about DNA for so long, but what is DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid? DNA is the building blocks for all living organisms, whether it's the tiniest microbe or the largest mammal. Now, it's made up of four basic nucleotides. Adenine, thymine, cytosine, and guanine, or ATGC. Now, one very unique thing about DNA is that they are complementary in nature. An A always pairs with a T, and a C always pairs with a G. That means even if we have a single strand of DNA, we can always replicate the other, making copying of information even more efficient and easy. Now, what are the importance of using DNA as a data storage medium? Firstly, the massive data capacity. It can store about 215 petabytes of data per gram compared to, you know, traditional storage media. That's not even it. It is very eco-friendly and it is not harmful to the environment as traditional storage media. It's portable, it can you know, be transported easily. It's quite secure as it's invisible to the human eye and cannot be tampered with. It is effective in power usage. It's not affected by environmental factors like temperature and radiation. Further, it is in line with our goals of the future. Now, change is more led by the failures of the old rather than the appeal of the new. So what were the failures of the existing storage media that made us look for alternatives such as DNA? Firstly, the limited storage capacity. Firstly, traditional storage media cannot keep up with the growing amount of data. Further, the short lifespan of you know, hard drives, disks that risk data loss and you know, high energy use, uh, not only for cooling the devices, but also for powering them. They have slow writing and reading speeds and also high space limitations. Now, the following paradigm shows how we evolved from magnetic tapes to floppy disks, compact disks, hard drives, and USBs, and how in the near future, mostly by the next decade, we would be moving to DNA to store data. Now that we know that DNA data storage is much more better than traditional storage media like hard disk and USBs, let's learn how do we actually store data in DNA. It comprises of coding and decoding. Now coding or encoding data in DNA consists of the following steps. Firstly, we convert the digital data into binary with help of the ASCII. Then the binary is uh, you know, converted into DNA bases or nucleotides with the help of mapping where A is a 0, 0, T is a 0, 1, C is a 1, 0, and G is a 1, 1. Then we synthesize this DNA in synthesizing machines, and then we have our DNA. Now, one of the most important parts is retrieving the data that we just stored in the DNA, or decoding the data. For this, we use sequencer machines where we identify the order of ATG bases, and then with the help of mapping, we convert them back into the binary. Then again, we convert this binary back into digital data or its original form with the help of the ASCII.
Now, everything has pros and cons, and DNA is no exception. So what were the challenges or what are the challenges in implementing DNA data storage? Firstly, high cost for synthesizing and sequencing processes. So writing and reading speeds, it's still it's in development phase, so it is quite immature technologically. It has limited write cycles and cannot uh, you know, afford frequent updates and new information to be added. It has slow retrieval processes and error during coding and decoding is quite inevitable. In conclusion, DNA data storage is an innovative solution. It is durable, long-term stable, and as we have DNA multiplication, we can create multiple copies and distribute it to servers. Now, DNA data storage is going to become the new norm in the next decade as the prices of sequencing and synthesizing machines are coming down. According to Data Biogenesis, the next decade will see the rise of DNA data storage. I hope you all enjoy the presentation and actually understood the main basis of today's presentation, which is DNA data storage. Thank you.